One of the big perks of being a renter is that you don't have to worry about the details of updating and fixing your home, but what happens when the landlord checks out and leaves you with all of the problems? I'm here with attorney Sway Connolly to go over that, what you should do when it comes to the changes to what you signed. You know, you say, right. I signed on to this <laughs> and it changed uh, right as I did. Uh, before we get into the, the nitty gritty uh, of okay. what you signed and what they should do, uh, what would you say are the major issues that people are suffering from and discovering? So the biggest issue when you're renting is your security deposit, uh, timely repairs, communication with the landlord, uh, pests are an issue, especially in this area, both in, in all of the DMV. I would say those are the top three issues that I see at uh, my firm, Wade Grimes, Friedman, Mankin, and Leishner. Yeah. So get into the documentation. I mean, first off, you got to know your lease. Right. So the first thing I tell everyone is that you have to read your lease. Uh, it depends, and it varies case by case. So the big high rises, the big apartment companies, they all pretty much use the same lease. So if you've read one, you know, if, and you're extending your lease, you don't have to read it as closely. Uh, when you're renting from a, an, a person, not a company, uh, an, a landlord when you're renting a condo and stuff, it's much easier to be able to go back and forth, maybe negotiate some things, ask questions. A lot of the time when you're renting from a big apartment company, they pretty much give you the lease and if you can take it or leave it. And if you've been dealing with issues for weeks or months even, you also want to establish a paper trail. So keep those emails, keep the, the text threads. Right. The best way to communicate with any landlord is through email. Uh, text is good too, but the best thing is to do is through email because it has a timestamp. It tells you what dates you sent it out. And it's a much easier thing to print out. You don't, you know, a lot of courthouses don't let you bring your cell phone to court. You, it's harder to get text messages. So email is the best way. You mentioned some of the common issues off the top. Will any of them work to let you out of your lease early? I mean, do you have any rights to say, okay, there are mice here, there's mold and mildew. I want to move and not be penalized. So you have to look at how the lease works with the laws of the state or of, the D of D.C. If there's mold uh, and it's not disclosed and you discover it and it's affecting your health in a way, there are ways that you can, you can look at terminating the lease. If there's a big pest issue and the landlord is not adequately looking at it or adequately repairing anything, you can, you can look at terminating the lease. The renters, all tenants have the right to live in a safe property that doesn't, and a healthy property, right? So if it's affecting your health, if it, pests are always a big thing, um, there's things you can do, whether it's filing an action in court or talking to the lease and looking at lease termination. What if you chose a location because it offers, say, a 24-7 concierge, and then all of a sudden they go, well, we're only going to offer it Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m.? Is that enough for you to leave your lease or terminate your lease because it's not what they said they would provide when you originally signed it? So it depends if that's in your contract or not. Okay. A lot of those special perks are not really in the contract, so huh. that's how they can they can change the hours. So you have to really look at your lease. Um, it's, it's definitely not going to be in the statutes, but if, if the lease says it, then you have an argument as to how, why they have to provide it. Gotcha. And that's why you said it goes back to reading the <laughs> fine print. Don't take it for granted. Correct. Absolutely. What about time? Do you have to give them enough time to rectify a particular issue before you take it legally? Yes. And it'll depend on the issue. Okay. Um, it's... Everything says reasonable notice, right? So hmm. whether reasonable notice is 24 hours, 48 hours, it'll depend if a repair is, you know, a light fixture isn't working, that may be a little bit more, give you a little bit more time. If you don't have running water, if you don't have heat, that kind of stuff has to be fixed almost immediately. Yeah, those are necessities. Yeah. Sway Connolly, thank you so much. We didn't have nearly enough, enough time, <laughs> but hopefully this will help people navigate if they're dealing with that. And I will say that we're going to have much more on renters' rights, uh, including next week. We're going to talk about how more millionaires are entering the market and how that can change the price for you as well. Sway, thanks again. Of course. Thank you.